Uh, right now, we'll have one of the most interesting panels. We'll actually talk about money, <laughs> about investment, about trust, uh, about who is worth getting your money, where to invest. So we'll have 100 or 150 people around. 150 people. Each of us, each of us is investor, and each of us has some equity, some capital. So, the total amount of this capital will go up to 20, 30, 40 million dollars. So, this is huge money. We can build many enterprises and create many businesses with that. So, private equity is important for everyone, and it's important for the state because it is the driver for the economy to flourish and grow. It's important also for us as investors because they give us understanding. We, if we understand this factor, we can actually save money, we can keep the money, and we can somehow increase our capital. And private equity is important for the companies, for enterprises, because this is a huge source of financial resources. In the U.S., the volume uh, so the volume of, of stock exchange market, we have 150 percent of GDP. So Ukrainian stock exchange market, Ukrainian stock market is not working. The capital market, the equity market, it is not working in Ukraine. So today in Ukrainian banks, we have approximately 13 billion dollars of deposits from individuals. Uh, Unfortunately, well, well, this amount is not big. It's not that substantial. And if we compare with something that we ha that people actually keep at home, with the amount of money they don't invest, with the equity they don't, we speak about 50 billion dollars, according to different estimates. And this money don't work for investors. This money just stay elsewhere and are maintained. So today we'll talk on where to invest, where you shouldn't invest, definitely, and uh, we'll talk about how to invest. And we do hope that some practical tips we'll get from our panelists today. So I would like to represent our phenomenal speakers because they actually present the whole industry and their opinions on the private equity. They can be very polarized very opposite so freedom holding corporation owner chief executive officer director timur turlov Sergei Pozniak, owner and CEO of FGK Financial Group which includes the biggest uh, Network of Investment Service to funds in a financial company, so expert with two years of experience of investing in Ukraine. So Alexander Vlasyshin, advisor to the chairman of the board of joint stock company Bank Rakata. He knows how to work with real estate property in Ukraine where mostly people lost their money. So, Yelena Baitsun, we also have her here, Investment Director, Central and Eastern Europe Luminate Company, which is a global investment and philanthropic organization created by eBay uh, founder. And also, Yelena is uh, a champion in chess. Yeah, she is. And now we have a legend, Sergei Butkin, investment banker, founding and managing partner of Finpoint Investment. Uh, right now he lives both two continents, so he observes all the markets, all the financial markets all around the world. Sergei Butkin. And uh, we also have here from on the left, we have Yvihan Pensak, professor of economics and finance at KMBS, Kiev Mohila Business School, and also PhD, uh, author of many publications. and. Uh, developer of intellectual games. So my first question actually goes to Yevgen and I think to Timur. Uh, how do you think? Are Ukrainians financially literate? So financial literacy, do we have it actually here in Ukraine? Is it well enough to make some uh, good uh, financial decisions, investment decisions to keep the capital? You can see this in the academic environment. Many people do know you, so you actually were the teacher and professor of many people in this hall. But Timur, for you, you, it's about some practical agreements, some practical decisions. So thank you, thank you so much. I think the level of financial literacy is not that high in Ukraine, but I'd like to say that in U.S. 
this level is not that high as well. Maybe it's higher, of course, but uh, in the U.S., I guess the difference is that they have more trust. The level of trust is higher. So we actually have this huge person with a uh, problem with trust and for so many times people lost their trust and in these conditions when people don't have enough trust and uh, the financial literacy is quite low so imagine many people they just block from all the opportunities because uh, if for s if so many times they actually are manipulated and uh, they meet people who somehow um, we treat them improperly, so they just block, they close this page, they close the book and go away. So financial literacy, um, any kind of trust, any uh, conscious trust comes from financial literacy. You simply need to know what you invest in, what the risks are, uh, how will you protect your investment, your equity, and why won't you protect them if, if, if something is okay. So without that, it's really hard to do something at all. And uh, right now we can see that, of course, uh, let's say those who stick to the fair play principle, those who work in the market, they will try to gain the trust of their clients, not with attempts to make people sim blindly believe them, because normal people, adequate people don't just blindly trust, they don't blindly believe, but get that trust through recognition of the processes that are, that are cure. And, uh, you know, when we were opening actually our office, our new office in Kyiv, and we started hiring the investment consultants. One of the first things that we faced, which was radically different from something that we worked in uh, Kazakhstan when we opened our office in Kazakhstan. So the employees did not want to come to interviews when they heard investment company. Okay, it's really not smart to expect people. So if the industry cannot hire specialists and experts because specialists and experts are afraid of the word, so they expect to get something uh, inappropriate from the investment company. Yes, yeah, so this was a hard start, I guess. You had a hard start in Ukraine. Yeah, so I do hope that you'll have a better uh, story afterwards. So, Yevgen, how do you think financial literacy, so uh, financial awareness, uh, who comes to you who goes away. So uh, I start from afar. So the first instrument uh, to demonstrate the trust in the population is money, okay? And uh, especially paper money. So the first money appeared in China long, long, long ago with the Ming dynasty and this dynasty thought they would rule for thousands of years. Yes, first they had trust to paper money and uh, uh, actually they even were drawing the amount of uh, coins to be replaced by the paper money, but then they faced something like the deficit of the budget, they started printing more, making more, and people saw that the amount of coins does not correspond to something, the image drawn on the money, and they were exchanging each paper note with a half of the coin amount. 50 years it took for the paper money to live there, and they were just, you know, forgotten. So. I'll start answering the question or I'll start the discussion of what the money is, what the trust is, especially education. So we need to start with early childhood, of course. Like all my financial education, I studied in Switzerland, in Switzerland, and I was talking to my colleagues who had small children. They said, okay, what do we discuss in the kitchen Yeah, every morning? So we speak about corporate events, everything that happens in the world, maybe some elements, uh, some manipulations, some fraud. P children must be immunized already not to be caught by fraudulent people afterwards, okay? Not to be uh, caught in some manipulations. And then I'll tell you a little bit about the trainings that uh, I actually organized. And one of the last trainings we had at Kiev Mohila Business School where to put the suitcase with money, you know, where to bring it. So starting with the financial maths, 
key formulas like how to understand if I invest this today I will get this financial flow in the future how for example can I put on the scales like something I refuse to have to have today and something I'll gain in the future did you study this at school and I see very strange faces like how in school can we actually study something about financial maths so as far as I understand you think this is the responsibility of school parents uh, previously was the Communist Party <laughs> so the financial component it must be essential to our lives starting from the toddler age because we live in capitalistic society maybe our children will do so these rules we need to understand them and not just give everything to universities yes you understood me correctly but uh, many years ago I've been working as a uh, a teacher at school just a teacher so at that time uh, we had many subjects uh, financial math uh, subjects right now they actually disappear but maybe not all children uh, actually uh, go to these lessons and financial culture itself it must start from the parents from the household parents must use must must learn children must teach children how to actually use the strategic resources how to plan everything school and university enhances that and people already prepared must come to universities and they already need to, uh, must start thinking on how to implement their ideas and how to use this financial resource so financial maths must it's a must and then we speak about risk analysis and so on thank you thank you Johan, for your opinion it's really fundamental and it's really good it's really timely so uh, Sergei Butkin uh, dynamics of private uh, investment, private equity flow. So why don't we have any fundamental shifts? Why the stock market isn't growing? Why the financial literacy is just one part? Okay, so we partially answer the question. What else does not work? So you have huge experience uh, in investment area. So before the panel uh, we talked that we will speak about future not about the past but okay let's speak about past without the past so we will start with the past okay <laughs> okay we will um, I can actually tell you I can actually give an answer with with my personal story my personal case so we have this Ukrainian man Alexander Bazarov I love this example very much he actually is uh, one of the uh, he works right, uh, right now in Russian Sberbank company once he gave a presentation, a very beautiful presentation, on why Ukrainian stock market does not work where the investment is. So in a year, he comes with the same presentation to the following conference, and he was very cynical. He told, like, nothing changed. Uh, and I can say that mostly this is, well, this is the answer to your question, actually. There was... Nobody created a system of private equity. Uh, it was like... Uh, it looked like this. So external consultants come and try to create something that works in other countries. They, they all attempt to do that. But basically, it, if you want to create a market itself, nobody thought about this. So they simply thought if we create infrastructure, it will somehow start working. But the problem is, is that market didn't start working. So first of all, because still we, we still haven't had any single authority because any single authority thought about it in a different way so it's not about how to regulate the non-existent marketing but creating tools that would be interesting and people will manage to buy it and something that will be accessible first of all affordable so lack of tools okay lack of infrastructure so it's not created it doesn't work okay so if you do allow me if someone reads my Facebook uh, I had one post there so for example why do we have the stock market in Russia because the difference between us and Russia is that when in Russia they had this massive of privatization launched everyone got the vouchers so cashless paper and it was sold okay for a vodka bottle but the emission was so huge and the interest to this 
paper was so huge that basically its presence created somehow, you know, as a chain reaction, and the stock market emerged. In our country, in typical Ukrainian manner, you know, just cutting the cat's tail in a couple of parts because we feel sorry for the cat. So we did it in a little bit different way, and we actually made some complicated individual vouchers, and practically there were minimum opportunities to sell it el elsewhere. And our stock market, you know, froze itself in the 90s, in 1994, without any changes. Okay, so we'll talk about future, of course, we'll talk about future trends, but it's important to have a small retrospective right now. So, Serhii Pozniak, in your company, how do you assess the dynamics? the dynamics of private equity attraction in your company and dynamics of actually use of the private equity of its depositing. So are there any trends, positive trends? Good afternoon, dear friends. I'm really happy that we have so many people today and uh, people who actually care about the investments as a component of our economy. And uh, it's very good to stay here. With Ivan Pensak, who was also my teacher from Kiev Mohila Business School, and uh, like, yeah, it's really interesting to have your professor here. So, uh, you know, the dynamics of private equity attraction, it depends on the trust. So the foundation of the trust that is built by investment service. And in our country, yes, investment services must get that characteristics, you know, as responsibility. They must become responsible. So this responsibility of the company, it must be the company and individual, both corporate and individual. So investment services must be responsible for uh, the resources that they attract, that they get for each uh, Rivna. And in our company, the dynamics is positive because locally we've created the tools which allow investors transparently invest, transparently uh, simply to know where the money is used and uh, basically and definitely get certain return, of course, certain dividends. And I think that the to keep this dynamics, uh, what should we do? We need to reform the financial system. So far, it's uh, it's 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 a typical one component system. So we have alternative financial instruments uh, and have this classical ban banking system, and all other alternative formats they. Uh, require they demand for development so at the level of state we need to create certain conditions and tools for these systems to develop finally if we take the u.s and as, as an example so they have this classical banking let's say six so if speaking about the classical banking asset they have 16 trillions and also other funds and other alternative formats as well are there. So Jack Ma yesterday, I have a good news. He actually said that banks have had, pro had problems, yeah, directly, because the classical model of banks on uh, providing loans to big enterprises, it's not sustainable. So banks have to look for new models, for new formats, and we do hope that in this struggle, they will find their new role in crediting, in providing loans. So, okay. Apart from the banking banking system in Ukraine, so we have this one food that actually functions, and Jack Ma told. So our financial system is composed of one sick leg. Okay. <laughs> Good. But this is current situation. We will not fall into despair. Okay. So Eliana Batsu. So the venture capital globally is a huge part of private equity. So when actually uh, I hear about this venture capital in Ukraine, so nobody, it's like a fairy day, nobody has, has seen that. Why in Ukraine? It's, it's, it's not a tradition maybe, it, it, it's not appropriate. Why it's such a low level? So basically we are so illiterate or what? Like what's the complexion? So yes. Yes, we actually have been working on this issue for so many years as a PRDR fund. We also have an office in Silicon Valley and we work globally and we actually are a huge fund. 
But when startups come to me with actually request to fund them, I understand that we cannot become, become uh, like this primary capital because this is not our model of development. And uh, for four years already, I've been trying to understand how to, what, what to recommend the startups? How can I help them to grow? and uh, to get to that level where we can support them. So I would like to tell you, frankly, uh, it's not about trust to infrastructure, I guess. Uh, it's more about the key principles of uh, such principles as transparency and accountability, yes, that we have global principles. Uh, it's very good when the system is transparent and it's very good when you can see everything that's going on in the system. And uh, it's very important actually to have an opportunity to be accountable. Somehow, so if you see something that you don't want to see something improper, you have a right to uh, actually contest that. So I think this part still does not work in the area. That's why we come painfully through that. Basically, we need to have the rule of law. Many people talk about that. We hear about that all the time when it comes to international investment areas. So, but for internal market, I think rule of law is even more uh, important because internal capital, it means that our internal national investors, they actually invest in the state where they do live and uh, they have a right, a full right to use their capital, their equity, and they have a right to know what profit they can get. Thank you for your opinion so far. We define that we need to have education, trust, responsibility, and lack of infrastructure in such a format we would like to. These are the obstacles for private equity to develop in Ukraine. So there is a sector which has been classical forever. So classical magnet for in, uh, private equity real estate. Yes, everybody knows about this. And I think the ex Alexander has the most expanded experience so real estate market it's competing with banks for private equity so how do they feel I mean how does the market feel is it competitive enough uh, have any risks accumulated do you have a feeling of this upcoming bubble or blast hello good afternoon everybody so yes when you speak about the real estate it's a classical classical area why classical area because um, this market works for so long people understand how it works and certain cultures already uh, created and methods of control and minimization of risks uh, for losing money we understand where they are what else it could be interesting with uh, how it can promote private equity actually to flow there investor is not left alone with a product and uh, if we speak about uh, residential property, residential real estate. So we speak of certain group of investors who invested their money. And uh, if you already are a member of the group, it's easier for you to create certain requirements for the market, certain requirements for reg regulatory bodies, and to look for protection to join, actually to search for protection, it's easier. So the market in any uh, in any country that has this trend to develop, like with the big cities, uh, the uh, centers of regions, in cities like Kiev, always this will be uh, popular there. So uh, there will always be some demand. So depending on the level of development of certain region, we just need to understand which specific uh, segment in the real estate area uh, will be more popular. For example, the statistics tells us that in Kiev, every year we have 200,000 people more each year. So 80,000 households or families come to Kiev each year in average. So today the business can actually ensure the objects for investing, but the key thing actually is to minimize the risks. Why? Uh, for me as representatives of the banking uh, institution, Bank Arcata, before we actually uh, implement certain projects, we learn the risks, we study the risks. So previously, if we had this well-formed uh, criteria of risks that we need to work with if we make a specific decision within the project. So today, these risks 
come from classic to very uh, unusual, let's say. So I actually support the community vote, but yes, we, we have certain communities in Ukraine which do not represent certain region, which do not represent certain location, but ma manipulate with opinions. and. Uh, the law enforcement system does not respond to this. They don't have. So we, we say that uh, real estate risks, real estate investing risks, we have more of them. So they changed. Uh, we need to start controlling them in a different way and monitor the situation. Yes. The opportunity of the private investor to assess the risk, again, the information. So the information presentation, we, we have a lot of open data everywhere so uh, in internet you can actually find a lot of opinions which uh, some opinions are manipulative and uh, the key risk I guess when it comes to real estate investing any sector of real estate so the analysis of information which is available in the media that's why we need to draw specific attention. We need to prioritize that. Yes, it's about trust. Yes, it's, it's again about trust. Dear ladies and gentlemen, we have an opportunity to ask questions. I'll, you can send uh, it to me through Telegram channel. I do hope that organizers will, organizers will actually bring the algorithm. You'll, we'll get them. And the most interesting questions will definitely be voiced. Of course, uh, instantly or in the end of session, so you're highly welcome. We need to have a code. Uh, yeah, you can use a specific code for that. So we spoke about money, we spoke about trust, we spoke about profit, profitability and risks. Classical investment formula looks like a balance between profits and risks. But this formula comes from 19th or 18th century. I think it has been changed a lot. People talk about this. So investment today is not just about risks and profitability. It's, um, well, Yelena mentioned that some, some way. She told about impact. Yesterday, Jack Ma told about this, that in their company, they don't speak about profits so they speak about clients they speak about needs in your opinion today how does the investment formula look like classic yeah so profitability and risk which elements should also be involved included in this formula briefly what should we add in the recipe okay so to cover the current trends if, if I can start, yes, thank you. Because this issue is uh, really appropriate for the model that we work with. So we are an impact investment fund and we work with something that is called a flexible capital. It means that we can do, we can actually invest anywhere. So classic format of investment, direct investment or grants if actually we need to develop the market in this way. But the most important principle for us is that an enterprise, an organization, if we take any enterprise, we don't actually look at ROI, but we think about social impact more. The social impact of the organization's activity or positive effect for environment. For Ukraine, I guess this is very, very, very timely right now. So uh, it doesn't mean that with such investment, we have no return on investment. Classic impact investment, always it's always about returns. And 66% of impact investors, they actually expect that return will be with the market uh, rate. So in this risk, and return balance, we have quite a good result, I guess. But still, in, the inve in our investment models, we always add this third factor is impact or influence. And I think for Ukraine, this is the factor that can be called the dignity. Something you invest in, something you're interested in. And uh, if you want to impact somehow in your country, impact actually influences development. I frankly this is a huge market this is a huge market and uh, actually a little bit more than 500 million dollars only six percent for our region and i do think this is very this is very interesting i'd like to know how our panelists actually see this uh, ba uh balance formula with additional uh with additional factor oh uh, we have the questioner right now on the screen but it, it has to come later okay so i'll comment on that uh 
We have a small referendum for you today. So what actually is the obstacle for you to invest in Ukraine? We have four options. So lack of knowledge. Okay, you don't know how to do that. You simply don't know. Then we have uh, absence of trust. No, 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 no. Let's just. Okay. Lack of knowledge. Then high risk. You simply don't take the risk. So high risk is about high profitability. But even this profitability, like 30, 40 percent, is not appropriate for you. You tell this is too much. I don't want to invest in this profit. But you have no. You don't have a lower profit profitability level. So the third one is uh, trust to investment objects. So you cannot find the object uh, convenient and comfortable for you. Maybe this stops you. Four. So the investor's rights are not protected. So, okay, you know what the mechanism is. You have enough knowledge. You can invest. You understand the risks. You understand the profitability level, but you don't feel that you're protected as an investor. So vote during the panel and we'll discuss the results in the very end. I think we can take the results out because, yeah, <laughs> we'll have it in the very end. Uh, and please right now the investment formula I heard from you. Okay, impact dignity. I heard that. So what else can we add if in brief? What ingredients? If in brief, okay. Our group of companies, one of the few that has the impact investment experience. So uh, we actually invest in many interesting projects. And I think this is an essential component because if the players of the financial market, if they do work on uh, creation of this invest friendly environment, investor friendly environment, where the business will develop and flourish and will have fair partners, um, respected partners, every, if everything is uh, goes fast, we can nurture the projects to invest in safely with the trust and uh, with profit. So also impact investment is in long-term perspective. They, they, they create in long-term perspective the infrastructure. They uh, create specific conditions, favorable conditions for the resource actually to disseminate, to be disseminated within the regions and to stay within the project. So we have a concept, a decade concept. And uh, according to this concept, Ukraine must actually uh, f must actually become finally a country with uh, one of the best one of the best conditions for the business uh, internal conditions. So we need to have the privileged funding programs, and uh, we have the veterans uh, business program funding like like that, almost without an interest. So uh, and it helps us to create the conditions where investors will feel safely, see, feel protected. They will see the results of, they will see how the money works, not only with the dividends, yes, but to gain the opportunity further uh, to, to have more a uh, happier life later yes in the region to live better in the region in the country where the investment is made so invest in good projects because good projects create good market and they multiply okay good Timur your secret formula secret recipe risk and profit what should we add actually okay Look, profit is a good thing, always. And I think this is the key factor that any business should take into account. Why? Because when you do something useful uh, and the consumer is ready to pay money for this, and if you create a, and if you create a product with uh, less money than you get from the consumer afterwards, this is the best proof that you do something useful. If Frankly speaking, you uh, perform activity and you give more than you get. There is a, already a misbalance that does not allow you to reach any sustainable development, and that is why. That is why. Even the idea of charity is a very complicated case to make it, uh, let's say, useful. It requires a lot of professionalism. It's really important, of course. It's a huge task for the. Uh, but if a businessman is focused on business, the biggest problem is the, sh the short horizon that we take. Okay, so all things related to impact investment, for example, they. Um, 
substantially they don't work uh, for short-term horizons for short horizons but for long horizons they actually bring specific profit concrete profit it's not an investment to make our lives here on earth better it's not investment for the charity in your country investment uh, you need the investment you personally okay an example for example there is a story with uh, the financial literacy we started with that okay despite the fact that uh, the thing with the financial literacy, especially with financial literacy uh, for children or teenagers, this is not like a business task. Of course, students, they don't become investors. They don't start investing instantly. This is a law. Students pay for education. Parents of students pay for education, mostly. Uh, all rules have exceptions, but still, students, they are not investors. And in normal conditions, people become investors after 30 35 in average so they start turning into investors when they reach their peak yes peak of their career development when they have less expenses and when they get their maximum profit when they're already adults so if you start investing in uh, financial literacy you have this long-term effect which uh, you are the beneficiary of this effect, okay? You're the beneficiary of this investment, but with a long interval, longer interval. And this can be an impact investment on the one hand, which does not bring you any profit within the short horizon, in short period, but gives you strategic position within the long horizon. And the share of market and certain reputation, certain respect, I can say so. Relatively speaking, all big companies, all huge companies, uh, why they're different from ordinary companies. This long horizon, they're not afraid of looking into a far. And the readiness to invest money and they don't usually demand the profit right now or tomorrow. So it's a huge art how to do that. It's an art. So in my opinion, this this is the search of this balance between the society, the use for society and the profit for you individual. Something must return. If you do something, if you do something good, you will always get your return. Thank you. Yes, Sergey. You asked uh, about the impact investment example. I think the best example is definitely uh, the beginning of the last century in New York. In 1900 year, they in New York had four million people with one million horses. I, imagine what happened there. This was one of the biggest problem, and people were suffering. Uh, <laughs> the horse shit, you know. So basically, on f even on Fifth Avenue with the most expensive houses, you know, one meter, one and a half meter of, I'm sorry, shit was the, the, the height of, of the shit layer that was there on the streets. Because <laughs> uh, actually, when uh, people started manufacturing cars, it was not just about making um, your trip faster and more comfortable. Okay, so it's simply created a better sanitary environment in the city. It's about making your air cleaner, comparing to 1900. Only in 10 years, the difference was, was huge. But of course, if we have more cars than people, right now we have a different, another problem. But it's a fact. It's an example of how in 10 years in New York, in the beginning of the century, a commercial decision, commercial solution uh, created this huge impact created this huge impact sorry this is like it's not my fault i'm sorry okay what does uh the classic science tells us what component do we need to have maybe a few components two three components but you know so we can talk a lot about classic investment methods criteria which criteria for which projects should be used but I do support the idea of my colleagues that we need to talk more about factors of successful investment, which mandatorily should be there when we invest in projects. So first, I guess uh, I'd like to draw your attention to is scaling. So the scale, please don't think about Ukraine only and don't try to be that local all the time. Okay, so all marketers tell us about that. Okay, stay young stay innovative even those people who, who are not young they try to look young so please uh, healthy lifestyle echo um stay echo friendly so personified communication with a client so 
this is something that we really need today for the project to be successful and uh, for the project to be attractive for investors. So financial system becomes more and more turbulent and to forecast something for a long time that we need to use the classic like VCF analysis of the discounted money flow. So no, no, it, it, it won't work. In the turbulent environment, if you want to assess uh, the cost of the company, it's about flexibility. Fortunately, there are methods today that allow us to do this in the combination with the listed factors. Uh, we can actually get some successful investment rules. Thank you, Alexander. A question to you. If you were to select like where to invest you have certain amount of money some capital you pick to invest where you like to invest but the profit is low evidently low or you will take something that you like less but it has let's say stable fixed profitability for you as for investor what would you like what would you advise for investor to pick okay look this 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 a question should be asked uh, we should ask this question uh, we should give this question to everyone. So we need to understand the opportunity of the opportunities of any kind of target audience. If the investment capacity is low, everyone would like to get more profit. Yeah, of course. If you speak about investment an investment company with high investment capacity, we can speak uh, of what my colleague said about business, which works for the long horizon. But with, uh, let's say, lower profit, okay, but again, this process will be longer, it will take longer time. And if we speak about big business, which can invest, is capable of investing long-term programs, it's about planning, opportunity of planning. And when we have short-term investing, it's like we get the fast money, we get the result faster, and uh, any investor has a wish to get maximum profit for any kind of project. Okay, good. This this question is for everybody where to invest, and uh, I tried to answer this today. I couldn't find an answer myself. I love like Amazon. It's not advertising. Five years ago, their shares uh, cost approximately 340 dollars. There were not so many investors who loved it. Today, almost two thousand dollars. In five years, 5.5 .5 times. Huge quantum leap. Why five years ago they invested in Amazon? They expected to get 550 percent in five years. Someone saw the trends. Someone just loved the company. Uh, that's why this is an open question for all the audience, for, for all the panel. Where to invest? in something you love, in all the trends you love, in something you are attached to, or stable fixed things that give you this average profit, but okay, if you do allow me. So the Amazon case is a very good illustration that uh, comparing to other cases or examples that we can use, Amazon, starting from the very first day of its existence, explained what it was doing, why it attracts money, where it is going to invest, what they are going to build, where they want to be in the very end, okay? And um, in fact, the result of this high market appreciation and uh, high market assessment, they actually overperform. <laughs> they may actually stuck to all their promises. They had this strategy for the long horizon and they got this uh, high profitability for investors. And in my opinion, this is something that we need to look for if we make certain decisions as investors. Again, if you have $10,000 and some people came for this, I mean, not, not for $10,000. Okay, investment strategy, we have another panel, we have another session, uh, another part of that. So let's bring in 15 minutes later. We'll ask, we'll ask you, um, okay, so I'll just, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just invest in uh, state bonds so far. Uh, okay, I, I, I do, I do, I do support Sergey that yes, we need to have this transparent coverage, transparent shell, some factor of attractiveness, because we, we, we want investor to understand the very sense of investing. And uh, investor must know what it will bring, how it will be done, and uh, actually how the money will turn within the market, how the business will actually behave. Because 
Okay, there are tools, there are tools, we'll talk about them. So look what we've got from the classic formula of investing, risk against profit. Uh, you know, such a simple story that we all used, what we have right now. In this formula, we need to add much more elements, social responsibility, impact, uh, uh, horizon investment period, clear communication of the company. Something personal in this formula should be there, something personal from the business and from you as from investor. You've again told that business you invest in must be innovative, creative, and it should be scaled, easy scaled. And these are the secrets of this, uh, let's say, simple formula. So the next issue I'd like to talk about is the regulator. Okay, so regulator, we spoke about this in the very beginning. We spoke about ecosystem tools. Without regulator, you won't definitely work. And the regulator's uh, role is really huge. Remember, 2008, the crisis in US, and many people were actually, after the crisis, telling that regulator did not see the problem, the systemic problem. Regulator did not uh, properly respond. So counter examples. Starting from 1993, we have the decree on currency regulation. So actually, when I was finishing uh, my banking career, this decree was in action. So this harsh regulation on the market, which does not allow the market to develop, lack of rules, somehow it does not, it, it also creates obstructions for the market. So we need to have this balance between the regulation. So like to keep the frame, where is the golden middle? Where is it? If you speak about Ukraine, over regulation or under regulation? So which is the role of the regulator? I think this is a topic for the separate panel and uh, Sergey. So please, if you do allow me two steps two steps back because it was not created from the bottom up you know uh, not with the not sticking to requirements of people who had instantly to invest to buy or sell something uh, some tools created by the state for example like vouchers in Russia but from up to the bottom so when the structure was created and in five years people started being very surprised, like why nothing hap well, nothing's happening. So the answer for your question is very simple. If you want to regulate something, regulate it when it exists first, and it has some critical mass in it. Uh, so regulation without the object or subject of regulation is nonsense. OK, yeah. Absolutely, because we will never invent an infra infrastructure, create infrastructure which would be which will be positive for investment and traction. So we will just copy something that, that was made already elsewhere. And uh, as according to this old truth, we will be the generals who still fight the finished war. OK, so market first, market first, give birth to something, like create something first. So I try to protect the opinion that uh, if we open the land market here in Ukraine, it will be a unique opportunity to create any tool which may be used to uh, actually launch the stock market. But this idea was not heard uh, because the discussion in social media was so harsh and so overwhelming before we don't fight before the state does not find or investment community in the state before they don't find the tool uh, which will allow to create the market and after that it is regulated there's no sense in regulation so far. Okay, Sergey, do you agree with that? I agree. I agree absolutely. We need to look for the balance and uh, how can we find the balance? By, let's say, disseminating the responsibility, sharing the responsibility. If the financial structure or system has more um, authority, it must have more responsibility. So yesterday in the evening, I spoke to Viktor Yushchenko, former president of Ukraine. We were sitting together at the table. He says, like, OK, why do we need to close a bank? Because we have the licensing. So this responsibility can be shared into pieces. 
Divide into pieces. If you see that the structure is turbulent, it does not meet criteria on loans. Take this. Take this license. Take the loaning uh, crediting license. So cut, cut the system in some way. Yes, we can define the responsibility and give some authority, some powers, but break it into pieces, and we can see how structure or the market player, whether they cope or not, with this responsibility, and regulate the authority. So. Okay, so be softer to people and like be more open-minded. We need to use facts, okay? The results, the work results. The results of the impact on the market, on the consumer, whether there is a use or damage for a specific segment. Timur, uh, how do you think? I think this is really important for you as well because something you want to you share something, yes. Um, on one hand, I actually agree that any regulation may be efficient only when you have enough fair players, okay, which are ready to work according to the regulation criteria, yes? And uh, today, if we generally, okay, take the stock market, uh, we have tiny amount, tiny number of these fair players, no one to regulate. But if we take, let's say, the industry of investment products selling to non-qualified investors as well, someone who is trying to attract the people's money, different stories, different cases, as licensees or not as licensees, among them, there are so many unfair players and fraudsters. If we compare specific periods of time, but there's no regulation for this. You cannot actually impact them because they don't understand the uh, actually they, they don't recognize the regulation of it. This 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 is already the responsibility of law enforcement in some way, and the criminal liability issue of specific market players or stakeholders for the things that basically are mentioned in the criminal code and something that is not related to regulation of the financial market. So we can learn something and get something from the U.S. because the regulation itself of the financial market is mostly built on the model of self-regulation. If you have players which are not fraudsters and they are not manipulating their clients, but still uh, they must comply with common rules, yes, which uh, ensure the industry sustainability, the players in the self-regulation mode, they usually are able to find a compromise. So big players are interested themselves in regulation also because they don't want to give advantages to fraudsters, to, let's say, toxic elements. It sounds great. 2008, United States of America, so greed uh, actually won, but not the fear. So regulator is never able to... Um, fight the population, the community opinion. Regulator is never capable of winning. Okay, okay. okay. can you formulate it again? So, Americans, look, Americans, in 2000, Americans believed that the real property price is always getting higher and higher, and it's uh, really safe to invest in real property, real estate property, you will always sell it for more money than you buy. Okay, it's it's a common idea, okay. And never, never huge, uh, never there, uh, there will never be any default, so the Titanic will not go down, it will never sink. So all regulators actually write the rules around this dogma, okay. Okay, and th this is this is how population works. We work in cycles. We live in cycles. We, we can do nothing with it. Yes, so we, we all are attached to these cycles. So I'll repeat. In my opinion, if we just try... The solution is that law enforcement system must be efficient. It must not punish the innocent, and it must not actually uh, ensure impunity for those who are guilty. So we can actually uh, minimize the regulation in the market and bring it somehow to the self-regulation mode in some way. So I'd like to turn discussion right now to the tr uh, closer to the trend of the forum. We speak about future. Every panel is about future because future has opportunities. It gives opportunities. If you speak about investment, we cannot invest in past, okay? We can invest in some out-of-date technology, but this is not a perspective for us. We can invest in uh, 
present or in close future. Buy a car, you'll be faster, you'll actually uh, some modern equipment some applications uh, robots they give us they save our time but this is a short-term investment if you speak about the most profitable the coolest investment what that is in future things in future trends let's talk about that okay about investment of in future how will the world change what do we need to do where to invest where to reorient we spoke about Amazon five years ago nobody was thinking seriously about Amazon but something definitely is here right now that in 2025 that we will remember uh, from this forum and someone will say oh in 2019 we had to do that we had to buy the cryptocurrency we had to buy that uh, how do you think so the next era or this era of informational technology if we take this chain money commodity money what do we need to stick to okay what is the future woo actually so you ask a couple of questions in one so uh, it's it's hard I just set the framework okay speaking about the future in my opinion it must be taken more as First, we need to invest in something that we understand or something you live in, okay? Something that gives you passion or something that influences your life. Uh, for example, I, I don't agree with the statement of Mr. Pinsak that if uh, I partially disagree that we need to invest in something innovative and creative, yeah? Because if we live in Ukraine and if we have a wish to invest in Ukraine, I would invest in something related to services and it's something about creating the convenient conditions and something to make the life of pensioners of the elderly more com um, comfortable people who require spe special care because the demography look at Ukraine's demography it tells us that this sector this segment will objectively increase the demand will increase because we will have more older generation there is we certainly have money in it and the current system current uh, community structure where mostly young people go abroad and work and send money to their parents who are still here in Ukraine will have that we'll have these transactions so the demand for any solutions will still be there so first of all staying in Ukraine again again it, it, if I stay in Ukraine okay I would definitely I will definitely look at any opportunities for investing with local trends yes in in I'm sorry for saying in the elderly people okay the generations are changing the Millennials uh, that we have here they have different consumers uh, other consumers needs they invest not because they need profits they invest because it's cool sometimes let's be frank they like it they actually want that I don't know all the parameters that they have when they make investment decisions so how to work with Millennials what to do with them okay Sergei Timur you know Millennials uh, practically they still don't invest okay so all their investment is still about getting something cool because it's not a moment for them when they already have money but they will they will come they will change and they will change on the way because in 10 years they will actually be of that age when uh, they are like let's say real investors and uh, the profit actually goes over the expense and they will be like us <laughs> no but they won't be like they will change they won't be like us but they will not be themselves yeah they will change so when you ask me about big trends and uh, when you asked what should be prioritized first of all the obvious story that many people talk about the world is changing the world will change in three years dramatically it will change in three years oh five years ten years so we'll have these huge substantial changes we live in this exponent so like the Moore's law yeah we'll have something similar we have this technological leap quantum leap we have it all the time look so in specific cases in specific cases when you have 35 engineers for example in WhatsApp and they support the service used by 2 billion people so some unbelievable things are happening unbelievable fantastic things and one of the key statements that we need to think about especially in business planning but still for the majority they don't know how is that the world obviously will 
change much faster than we actually are capable to, to understand. And the winner takes it all. We live in this world. Over efficiency, super efficiency world. Okay, okay, okay. We have Yelena, we have uh, impact investment. Okay. How the winner cannot take the <laughs> that all. The social equality, where is it? We'll have yes. Of course, we will have this increase. The, the social inequality will increase because due to this, because we become more and more and more inefficient. If we speak about economic productivity and uh, let's say if we speak like who will be the ruler of the world in five or ten years, I will be so brave, I guess, and uh, I'll just throw the statement. I think the company, those companies which are leaders today on capitalization, Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, Google, in some way, highly likely they will be the leaders in the next in in the in the close future so you don't even imagine what their potential is what their capacity is each year the gap between the companies and other market participants is just growing it's extending expanding so the trend will be kept it will be maintained okay let's look at uh, on capitalization okay so Sergey, i'd like to ask you just to reflect on what timur said when i was 10 years younger uh, it was really cool for the financial companies, banks, oil and gas, like, okay, that was all capitalized, yeah? And it, when 10 years ago, people told me, okay, it will stay like that. I believed in this. In 10 years, everything changed. Google, Amazon, Jack Ma, and you say that the trend will stay. Why should we believe you, actually? Why Sergei should believe you that in 10 years, Google and Amazon will be trendy, uh, catchy, and no other companies will emerge, okay? The reflection, the, 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 my opinion is the following one. So we have some research on that already. So uh, the magazine Entrepreneur carried out a research on the leading business trends. And uh, business trend number two is actually the alternative financing. So after the data protection, second position goes to alternative Fun, alternative financing sources, uh, so this is the, the world trend. If for me to invest in the creation of such systems then which would allow to provide financial solutions both to ensure the money placement, efficient money placement and for the project funding, starting from peer-to-peer -peer platforms and uh, up to fund tools. So the crowdfunding, we had this, you, you do believe in crowdfunding? We had this question from the people. This is a functioning model. It allows to make money. If there is uh, a responsible CFO, this model works, okay? I do agree with Timur. We definitely need to have investment. So if investment service does not respond or is not responsible for the money, nobody traces the risks like, why should I? So the responsibility, again, cryptocurrency, all that is a part of the financial market change. Do you believe in the cryptocurrency? OK, short questioner. I believe in blockchain. I believe in blockchain. Who believes in cryptocurrency? What to believe in? Money have five functions. In which function? Accumulation function, yes? Accumulation function. No, you don't. Saving function. No. I believe that fiat currency will be ex uh, replaced by crypto, but just as a means of but just as a means of exchange, a value exchange. But the cryptocurrency will not fully, fully replace it. Just the accounting and the control function. But uh, it's not about saving and accumulation. Of course, of course, for operations, for other functions, thanks to Moore Law, yeah, <laughs> of course. But the vast majority of other functions, which d money do have, I don't think so. I think crypto. I think crypto will keep the function, uh, the payment function, and uh, it's about getting further from the state system. So the corporate currency, not the banking and state currency, but the corporate currency to become more independent. I will be brave enough to say that the modern financial system is like a democracy. 
It's not a perfect story. It's not a perfect thing. But so far, we haven't invented anything better. So uh, fight money still works. We have them all. And uh, I do consider that so many expectations around the cryptocurrency. It's like it's overestimated in some way. Too many expectations. And of course, we all want to believe that blockchain will find its application in improving the financial flow. But the money will stay the same. Their nature will stay the same. Okay. Elena, uh, you are the only chess player here, <laughs> chess champion. You can actually um, have all keep all these combinations in your mind. I don't trust analysts. I was involved in writing analytical reports, but quite rarely analysts invest in their strategies. Like when British researchers tell, you know, <laughs> okay, I, I try to get some other opinions from the market. Yesterday at the opening of the forum, we had a very bright video, interesting video that actually showed us the key trends in economy development. And uh, I thought, I think there was a great statement like, "If only you win, this this is this is definitely not a victory." Uh, I know, I, I'm sure that we'll have changes, but the vector of changes, I don't agree. I can see that huge global trends are there to re. Uh, to understand the capitalism in a different way. So the statistics tells that 78 people in the US, they live from the salary to salary each month. Imagine that this capitalism, maybe this capitalism in Western countries, it does not work as it could have worked because well, maybe, maybe this also creates certain case for Ukraine, for our region that uh, we can build something new already because in fact we still transform this communist system soviet system and we have the advantage clear advantage we don't need to reinvent or understand the capitalism in a different way we can we can actually create something different so i'd like actually to give you the areas for investing which are definitely interesting for me uh and they will be profitable definitely so first one is the shared economy so the economy when resources are allocated between the members or participants like services when you can actually um uh, rent your car uh, or apartment. So this segment will develop, and this segment will develop due to millennials, as Kirill said, because they will do this. Be, um, they will do it as this would be the understanding of the economy. They will have this understanding. They won't have this feeling from the resources that only they should have it. They would really like to be more flexible, the opportunity to talk and opportunity to give something if they don't need it now. So the second trend, a huge trend, is what called circular economy. So the economy that goes in the circle. So related to eco-friendly projects, all these resources when we can process the waste, do something, make, make something useful. This is a huge trend. So many innovations are there in this area. And uh, I can say that this is really good for the world that we live in. And for every country, third area, huge one also. We invest, for example, right now a lot in any initiatives so related to data. First of all, the personal data, of course. And um, this is such a huge part of the economy currently, which was underestimated when the big data actually existed in the format of statistics 15 years ago right now this is a huge trend and this trend uh, all, all the monopolies that that we speak about all these monopolies work with data they make their profit on data and it means that this will be the market that will be regulated it will be protected of course if you want for example to become an investor to support a project support a startup and if you want to invest in a startup uh, connected to data protection, for example, do that. And if they grow up, if they become adult business, we would make it more scalable and provide our support at the international level. Thank you. Very practical recommendations. Alexander, real estate is classics, you know. 
So the amount of investment or trillions of dollars are invested in the world in real estate. What will happen with it? So as Yelena says, people don't want to own, they want to use. Okay. How will it actually affect the market? It's absolutely correct. So anyway, I'll repeat it again. If any region develops, it requires real estate segment to be developed as well. Uh, what I want to say is that today we also can have one of the trends that we don't need to take construction as a classics, you know, when you just build something and you transfer it to uh, consumers. So first, we need to join in some startups and the conditions, the service conditions that can be offered today to population, they uh, must be uh, actually uh, implemented and used together with the construction company. And if the construction company, if the developer has an opportunity to construct, certain amount of money, certain capital can be invested and uh, actually the long-term use, the business service, it's what we talk about. So. We have high profit in it, so if when constructors they join to create certain conditions together with developers for future living and uh, creating the infrastructure and that aura for comfortable living. Today we actually face, we constantly face, not even today, we constantly face this challenge that we are requested to provide better and better living conditions, real estate. So you tell that humans will not change, we're still biological entities that need protection from environment, okay? So we will always get, have this demand to feel protected. So the working place, we will always need some place to work, somewhere to live. So real estate market is a mega global trend. So far, it lives. It lives together with us. It exists together with us. It's conservative, traditional thing. Because if we exist, the real property, uh, the real estate property exists as well. Okay, yeah. So we just need to develop it because we want more services. And yes, yesterday I heard a statement that somehow was close to me. Jack Ma said that smart people know what they want, but wise people know what they don't want. So uh, we can speak so much of cool things we want to invest in, but when we have mistakes, investment mistakes, we have losses. We lose money and this is painful. And this is even more important than profit and other projects. But if you lose capital because you made a wrong decision, it can actually uh, cross out the profit and uh, deprive you of profit from dozens of good projects. Wise people know what they don't want. Okay. You, in the framework of your personal investment strategy, we do believe in personal things. We don't believe the analysts. If uh, wh well, when we do something, people trust us. Okay, if you speak about your personal investment strategy, three tools. Which three or four tools would you define that you invest in, or two and three you would never invest in? Okay. <coughs> If someone wants to bring something to the recipe, to this balance between profit and uh, risk, okay, three or four areas to put money in and to refuse. Okay, again, set the tone, please, set the correct tone. Thank you. I would actually go to classical formula risk profitability with all our commands. Uh, my wish, I guess what you should never do when you see no risks. When you see only profit, only positive, only return, please be careful. Get out of there because you don't understand anything. When you understand what the risks are, you can actually design this package, this profile, you can see uh, all American indices, the indicators, so we can talk a lot about psychology, of investment decision making and how we are affected by different myths but such profitability as we've seen uh, in 10 years the stock markets never knew that so it's it's past I tell you we're not to invest okay I, I still think of these macro indicators of American uh, economy that we have the unemployment level their inflation level still this market will grow 
And for the less professional investor, American uh, stuff like SPY, they should be prioritized. But in combination with that, I can see that the Ukrainian economy right now is very attractive. Here we have many funds. Uh, which would like to enter, but only when the environment allows. So look at the recent weeks, loads of negotiations, loads of deals, businessmen come with their ideas, and for them it's hard to find money. Banking is too expensive. Partnership would definitely work. So if just to conclude on the panel, so create small joint funds with mitigated regulation. It will help us to drag money out of Ukrainian citizens' pockets who do have money but have no ideas uh, for the money to work, for the money to turn into projects that will work in Ukraine. So Ukraine can be compared to a restaurant. In this restaurant, there are too many free tables. and. Uh, the ideas that small enterprises come with, they are definitely worth attention. And we can help national investors to actually fund these ideas. We need to. So if you do allow me, uh, from my own experience, we just ask you to give your experience. One of the issues, one of the questions I was expected to find, I was thinking, like, I need to imagine myself, a person who owns $10,000. I live in Korostin in Zhitoma region, a small town. Where can I invest $10,000 to have at least some profit, okay, to keep the money? Uh, for many people in this hall, they have more complicated problems, I guess. But still, before we, before people living in such towns like Korostin, before they don't found opportunities to invest, nobody will put it out from the mattress. Nobody will take it out. So I actually, well, people can ask me where to get money, but where to invest? Well. What these people should do, yes, living in small towns, keeping their money. So it's not important how much money you invest. It, your attitude is important. You, you, sh you can never invest something you don't understand. So, so only, only when you start investing with the first grivna, only when you put your first grivna in a bank or buy your first apartment, before that, educate yourself, get some self-education at school, university, anything for you to understand what is that about before you actually invest. And my biggest mistake, my biggest financial mistake was that I bought a company which uh, produced construction materials and I believe that this segment will always grow, will always be demanded. It was July 2008 and it was really painful. I also bought something in July 2008, yes, so first thing, doesn't matter how much you invest, invest only in something you understand. If your soul is drag to that. It's better because you will fall asleep and wake up with this idea, with this business. You'll think about it all the time, the region, the country, and you will understand where it goes. Third thing. Third thing. Invest in education. So coming to the analogy of Korostin town with $10,000, I would not pick these out of mattress, but I would learn English to start reading newspapers. If I invest in real estate, I would read in New York Times in August 2008. I would read that uh, a big ass is coming then. And I simply would understand that I need to invest in something else. Okay, very optimistic. Sounds very optimistic. Education. This is Yevgen's uh, actually impact when you speak about education. Alexander, don't invest in what? Yes, real estate, of course, where you shouldn't invest. Tell me. Yes, I do support my colleague fully, fully. Do not invest in something you cannot control, in something you cannot improve, and in something uh, you cannot regulate. So lack of knowledge in business, one thing, but when you have when you don't have access to important decisions, to decision-making process, when you don't have information of this business future, you shouldn't. 
So to tell you about the area where not to invest, maybe it's not a correct statement. Every single person with his or her intuition or level of knowledge, every person is responsible for defining that. But please study the market, study the perspectives, uh, analyze perspectives. You need to understand what can you expect from the business in the close future? Because uh, if there is no close future, how can we talk about long horizon? Thank you. Sergey, who would never get your money? <laughs> Which business or sector or segment? Oh, we have actually, our focus is SMEs, okay? So we fund the projects, we analyze them, and we call it uh, an efficient investment model. Where I would never give the money in business or uh, how we're taught in KMBS. First of all, answer the question why, okay? The business with no specific purpose, no aim, no goal, with no program of how to use the investment resource and how to reach the goals that they set for themselves. Uh, if they don't have a team, which knows what, what it does, because quite often people come and tell Okay, I want to get money, but I don't want to be asked any questions whether I would be able to do that. I don't need an investor who will control the implementation of the project, like, give me the money, I'll buy a car, uh, because I really want to have a car for, for so many years. <laughs> I, I wanted to have that. And people need to understand why they're doing that and how will the project be implemented. You should understand this also. Any investment also in our deep concern must be insured or guaranteed with uh, your own uh, capital or the business capital. Because if person gives money to someone, invests in something, uh, and no return is guaranteed, the return may have different formats, maybe different formats. So the money, the invested money seems to be just a gift in this case. And uh, the partner actually also was seduced to start thinking that that was a gift. So lack of responsibility, irresponsible investment. Don't give anyone your money. Don't give money for obviously, for obvious failures, okay? For obviously failing businesses. Okay, I'll be that brave and I will drag out this old statement. Don't give the money to someone who needs that so hard, okay? Because this is the key task of any banking institutions to give money to someone who doesn't need the money. And people who need the money, you, you shouldn't give money to them. Because if the entrepreneur thinks that the only thing is missing is money, it's always incorrect. It's always a failure. If any, in any way he'll find the money and you can offer uh, and you can help him somehow in this process to make it cheaper, faster, better, then it will be a good story. So I think for investor it's important to say no, to know how to say no. Because when the money is given to someone who is not reliable, well, the problem is right now, uh, the problem appears for, to be there for everyone and quite often you need to give money when people can actually work without them so then it's a good investment if it's not a priority it's a good investment for you and person who takes the money there's it's highly likely that people will do something good with their capital and they can actually achieve a little bit more but definitely it, your investment investment should not be the only capital they have okay Elena I'd like to recommend not to invest in something that will make your life worse okay something that negatively affects environment and uh, invest if it's a small amount of money it makes sense to invest in your local community in the area where you live something that will make the life of your neighbors better of your family and your community so it will develop the market in general but also to add to everything that was told by the speaker so the sense of investment is to make our lives better okay that's the point and there is an idea that money 
Not always. Not, it's not the money that makes our lives better. Uh, and this line between different types of capitals and profitability, this line it becomes more and more vague, you know, it, it becomes blurred. So right now I have a small charity fund. Uh, we try to help talented children who play chess and I try to uh, invest money in future, I try to invest money in children. It sounds, let's say, very non-conventional, but I think that this is the part of my investment portfolio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We do respect that. That really deserves the applause. Thank you. So we have 10 minutes and uh, two questions to each with two options. Without commands, just pick the pick one of two answers. What do you feel? Maybe partially the answers to your questions will be related to your preferences and in investments. Maybe not. but. Somehow, still, short questionnaire, Timur, Ukraine or U.S.? Ukraine. Ukraine, okay. So, shares or bonds? Shares, shares, okay. Sergey, reputation or profit? Reputation, of course. Strategy or opportunity? Strategy, definitely. Yevgen. Economy or education? Uh, these are the parts of one. Okay, so economy or education? Education, okay. Grivnia or dollar? <laughs> Grivnia or dollar? Tell that. 50 50, but now Grivnia, okay. Elena. Venture investment or grants? Venture investment. Creativity or discipline? Discipline. Good. Uh, Alexander. Real estate or deposit? Real estate. Obvious. Development or ready made object purchase? Development. Okay. So profit or accumulation? Accumulation. Partnership or competitor or competition? Partnership. Thank you. Twelve questions. You can actually make even a code out of them. The investment code from our panelists. The Da Vinci code, as they say. So what actually is the obstacle for you to invest in Ukraine? Please give us the results of the mini referendum that we had. Okay. So very interesting, very interesting. I'll comment on that. The results and then each of you will actually reflect on that because this is something that audience think of because the audience is really representative. So 29% lack of knowledge. I hoped, okay, let's finish. Let's finish with that. Let's finish with voting. Okay. So first, 31% is for uh, investors' rights uh, aren't protected. Then we have lack of knowledge. 27% go for lack of trust to investing object, investment object. 14% high, for high risk. Three, three factors. Three factors took approximately like one third of votes. Why so? Why such proportion? Nobody's afraid of risks. Okay, give, give me some comments. As Timur mentioned, many negative cases. Yeah, that's why people see. Uh, these cases as examples so they are very very concentrated on the rights of investors and the lack of protection and why these rights are not protected because we have lack of knowledge investment services are not professional enough and the market players they provoke these losses by themselves that's why uh, let's say fraudsters with lack of knowledge, yes, <laughs> primitive fraudsters, they actually pick, uh, yeah, so 
They're the one to blame. So they pick these low quality objects for investing. So reputation. Reputation is actually the most essential component when you select the investment service or the tools that you work with in the market. Sergey. I think that first why nobody no uh, why we have fourth position uh, for the high risks it's not the manhattan when we ask it's not the, we don't sit in manhattan right now and ask about ukraine so i'm i already it's already risky for me to live in ukraine so for me this is the the, the least important factor i already uh, i'm already in the risk okay yes but lack of knowledge and lack of an information they won because two and three are very close. If you have lack of knowledge and lack of knowledge about the object, this is basically the same. So something that we speak about, it's it's all about education, yes? And again, unfortunately, when it comes to the rights, maybe uh, the, the worst thing is that number four, it's already a dogma that investors' rights are not protected. Unfortunately, it, it is not changed. Evgen, I just want to say that you'll never have enough knowledge. This is a continuous process. The more knowledge you have, the more you understand that, okay, you need some more tools to uh, actually uh, master to make better decisions on investment. The earlier we start to educate people to work with uh, population in Ukraine, the more successful investments will be in the country. Thank you. Miss Elena. Just a confirmation that rule of law is very important in the country. It's just another proof. Yes, two factors are here when we speak about the rights of investors and the infrastructure. Lack of knowledge, I think it's also related to lack of infrastructure because we may know everything of how could we invest, how, how could we have invested, but unfortunately, if you don't have opportunities, knowledge will be impractical, pure knowledge will be impractical. Alexander, lack of punity, impunity. We reform everything, but we don't reform the structures which must control the protection of rights and control the investment market. And something that today does actually not provide us with a classifier or criteria on how to check the information in the media that emerges there. Timur, uh, okay, like you told that you shouldn't give money to people who really need it. Can you become more optimistic? It was optimistic, so thank you for being realistic anyway. I think a very good statement, a command that, uh, on the high risks. High risk is something we live in, so we shouldn't be afraid of that. I think that investment non-protection factor, I was uh, working in jurisdictions where investors' rights were protected better than in Ukraine. Yes, we hear, we know that such states exist. Not all these states anyway have huge flow investment inflow. For example, I will not actually give some judgments about big cases and stories, but in Kazakhstan, at lower level, again, I will not judge these higher political levels, uh, higher decision-making level, but when it comes to proprietal rights protection, it's organized even better. But the cases, the cases which I observed or where I participated in Ukraine, these cases, they sounded wild, even for post-Soviet Union. When in the registry you had the entry that this is your house and tomorrow it's not yours anymore, you can't do anything with that. So I think many people who were involved in business, financial, banking, real estate, they understand that itself it deteriorates competition and only those people who can work with that, they actually win. So correction of this story does not guarantee you that you'll have the inflow of investment and you'll have no inflow of investment without internal trust, without trust of Ukrainians and the wish to invest uh, 
in Grivna, in Ukraine, and other things. Foreign investors don't come unless you have internal investors. Foreign investors come only when your internal investor has faith in some story, in some financial tools, in, in some areas and segments, in projects. Thank you. So the best example, I guess, of the country where the rights of investors are protected, Belarus. Investors' rights are very protected comparing to Ukraine. These are our neighbors. Okay, friends, thank you, thank you. Thank you for participation. I'm grateful to the panelists for this wonderful discussion, for being harsh, for being honest. So what we have today, trust, education. Invest in Ukraine, please. Thank you so much for your attention.